I'd like to talk about aesthetics and demarcation. I'm going to suggest that demarcation is the essence of aesthetics. All aesthetics is demarcation. And demarcation is the essence of the right to separate out things that need to be separated out, to um, create barriers, to create walls, to create uh, sacred spaces. And because aesthetics is about demarcation, you would think that naturally the right would own aesthetics, that they would, and especially aesthetic excitement, the thrill, the, the resonance of aesthetics. But this is not the case. The left have seemingly taken over the realm of aesthetics and uh, they've demonised right-wing aesthetics as a kind of um, kitsch or whatever. The reason why the left is able to take control of aesthetics is because they basically um, have made destruction and chaos sexy and exciting. The cutting edge of aesthetics is supposedly transgression. But that's completely parasitic on them having something to transgress or something to destroy, something to burn down. And that thing that they transgress and burn down is uh, right-wing aesthetics. It's cathedrals, it's uh, lit literal cath Gothic cathedrals, and it's Greco-Roman statues and what have you. That's literally what they're undermining. And the only reason why it's exciting is that they have... It's the only reason why fire is exciting is it has something interesting to burn. That is the pyrotechnics of chaos. And when they have nothing left to burn, then their aesthetic collapses. It falls flat. So left-wing aesthetics are parasitic upon right-wing aesthetics, which they burn down. And like a parasite, when it's all finished, when it's, everything's burned down, the parasite will fall off. And presumably then, at that point, their aesthetics of chaos becomes boring. It becomes just chaos. Chaos just becomes chaos. The formless becomes just formless. It becomes boring. You know, anarchy's fine until it burns down your street. <laughs> so yeah, the right, by its very nature rules aesthetics for various reasons but the, the main one that we're dealing with here and the, probably the most essential one is that it has a sense of demarcation. So I'd just like to provide some illustrations of this um, identity between aesthetics and demarcation, how aesthetics is demarcation and how the left gets it wrong every time. Right, first of all the left get eroticism wrong because they're Eroticism is mostly formless. This is why uh, people aren't particularly attractive anymore and sex is ugly and uh, disgusting. And why pornography is, is just filth and violence and disgustingness. And why people's bodies are mutil self-mutilated and disgusting. Yeah, eroticism's dead, really. I mean, if you want to see attractive women, you have to go to... Eastern Europe. So right-wing eroticism requires some sort of demarcation between the sexes, uh, the womanly woman and the manly man, and they're different, and the difference between them creates some of the friction that is the erotic excitement. And left-wing eroticism doesn't understand any of this, and is drifting off into sex with dolls and machines and stuff, so... It, and the sexes are, are are being sort of obliterated. So there's, so eroticism is is in a sense it's sort of like uh, eating itself, it's cannibalizing itself. Baudrillard makes this point about aesthetics and I think eroticism at the same time. He has this illustration of um, these Japanese nightclubs where I think the women are sort of like laid out on a table and uh, the men sort of like pay to examine them up close, as up close as possible, sort of peering within uh, their groin area. And um, he says, well, this is not eroticism, it's like too close. There's no sense of demarcation, and there's no sense of the scene, because um, aesthetics has just collapsed at this point. And interestingly, they've sort of collapsed in Japan, that most... Uh, 
asceticized and um, traditionally asceticized and demarcated, demarcating culture that you could possibly imagine. Another area in which the left get it completely wrong is in, or modernism gets it completely wrong, or postmodernism gets it completely wrong, is in the realm of pyrotechnics. If you've seen the firework displays that sprout up from um, the Thames or any other, any of the other major cities around the world at uh, New Year's Eve, it's just a wall of fire, which completely obliterates what I think was the, the old order of pyrotechnic displays, in which you see a little bit of the night between the firework explosions, because it's a kind of a quasi-military aesthetic. And it's a magical aesthetic. You're, you're, you're illuminating parts of darkness, you're illuminating parts of the garden of heaven and hell. You, it's the, you have to see a little bit of the darkness. You have to see that they're pyrotechnics as well. And this is another Baudrillardian idea. You have to see the artifice. This is just a wall of strip lighting. It's just wall-to-wall -wall waste of um, waste of gunpowder or whatever they use. And um, obviously, the Gothic aesthetic is completely ruined by propaganda, leftist propaganda, and uh, modern music. Just rubbish, really. So that demarcation between darkness and light, between fire and night, between the pyrotechnic and the dull earth, the dull, unilluminated void, that's completely gone with modern pyrotechnics. It's uh, If you've seen any sort of woodcuts or prints or of Tudor firework displays or whatever, it's you can you can see that that's not that's not the original of the aesthetic and that's not the right wing aesthetic either and uh, I think this wall-to-wall -wall sort of beatbox version of pyrotechnics is quite a new thing it's just like overkill and overkill is another kind of formlessness and lack of demarcation uh, another kind of demarcation is, is the demarcation of poignancy. Um, I'm going to talk about poignancy rather than sacred spaces. So we can do that at a different time. Um, I went to the Isabella Blow uh, exhibition sometime in, I don't know, 2009 or something. I can't quite remember. And uh, some of her clothes still, she used to um, chuck fracas, I think, was the perfume. She used to chuck it all over herself liberally. Quite an expensive perfume. And uh, all her clothes were still smelling of, of, of this fracas, like um, 10 years or so after her death. And so you walked through looking at her exhibitions and her clothes and what have you. And there was a strange um, sort of, she was literally haunting the, the space in a sense in the sense that that was her perfume that she applied and it was a, it was a great thing and it was mentioned in the in the press but when when you go in, went into the gift shop they were selling fracas and, and um, I'm I don't know this for certain but I, I it seemed to me that they'd sprayed fresh fracas around the uh, actual gift shop i mean that that's breaking the spell of the poignancy <laughs> i mean to the extent that you've got the new the new perfume fresh fracas drifting into the old ghostly fracas from the 1990s and God knows when. Uh, it, it ruins the spell, and uh, a right-wing imagination would know that. You need to demarcate and separate out these two things for the spell to work. You could say that modern capitalism gets it wrong. You know, modern curator culture gets it completely wrong and uh, I say that's I'll say that's the left but uh, I don't know you could also say it's just modernism and capitalism I have no problem with them selling fracas perfume on the top of that that's fine it's just that particular little touch was just uh, a touch too much or a touch too less and uh, as Baudrillard was saying with the uh, with the obscen the obscenity, as it were, of um, the the gen Japanese gentlemen in the the nightclubs, you know, it's it's too close and yet it's too far.
Uh, just briefly, I'd like to say that there's uh, there's a certain morality about all this. I mean, Alexandra Dugan says that uh, liberalism is a is a style as much as anything else, which is why you have all these sort of freaks appearing <laughs> in culture, and um, I think that's right to an extent. There's a paradox in that for the left and for also for capitalism, which is in a sort of unholy alliance with the left, that everything is simply what it is. So, you know, a woman's nose is just her nose and it's uh, it's her property and so she can put a, a, a ring through the septum and pierce it and what have you, you know, it doesn't really matter. So it's just what it is. So it can, be, it can become anything because things are just what they are. They can just mutate and move over and cross lines. And that's the formlessness of, of a kind of reductive identity, an ident a, a, right, a reductive identity and demarcation of this is just this, allows it to become atomized and to just sort of uh, become formless and become anything. Anything can become anything. Things are no longer what they are. And I think that's the paradox. Generally speaking, you could just say, though, that um, the left love soft things and they love chaos and formlessness and the right love hard things and they love order and they like demarcation so not only is the right uh the master of aesthetics in the sense that they have a sense of demarcation but they're actually more moral because if anything is anything anything could become anything then the powers that be can do what they want with you they could change anything. You're just interchangeable widgets. The second sort of conclusion that I would come to is, is, is just uh, that the West is about this demar these demarcations. We have a rich culture because of that. And because the left do not have a sense of demarcation, they could quite easily say, for example, Britain has no identity, it has no culture, it has no... because it, it doesn't see it, because it doesn't... <laughs> Because it, it doesn't see it because it doesn't see it. It doesn't understand the category of demarcation. It doesn't understand how Mozart is different to drill or whatever. It's just a case of totting up who's got privilege. Anyway, my last conclusion is that um, as the Isabella Blow exhibition illustrates, we need to have, we need to teach aesthetics almost as a hard discipline rather than as a soft discipline because clearly things have gone very wrong and it should be taught as a hard discipline all the rigor of european culture is in that demarcation poignancy should be taught as a as a separate subject aesthetics should be a hard subject not a soft subject because a soft subject, softness is, is not aesthetics. Formlessness and softness and um, cultural relativism is not aesthetics. I would like to offer a kind of final summary to this video by going back to what was said at the beginning, which is that the left, their aesthetic excitement is always parasitic on the right. They always have to have something interesting to burn down in order to make their burning itself interesting. And when there's nothing left to burn down, when there's nothing left to deconstruct, then the whole magic of left-wing aesthetics falls flat. So when everything has been deconstructed, everything, all demarcation has been mixed up, everything has been everything is everything else and everything's a formless sort of blob then it will lose its cheap appeal people won't be interested in it anymore and right-wing aesthetics will naturally rise to the ascendant but we can't wait around for that to happen because too much will be destroyed in the in the meantime we have to create our own radical right-wing aesthetics of demarcation by making the demarcation which is natural to aesthetics even more severe 
no longer just a case of the pathos of distance or differentiated man or the high and the low it will be the natural conclusion the nat natural logical conclusion of aesthetics will, which will be the difference between winning and losing the demarcation between winning and losing it will be it will be the excitement of the difference between winning and losing we need to separate out winning and losing in order for there to be something for greatness to strive for the drive from losing to winning we must separate out winning and losing in order to create a gulf between them a chasm, a void, to deepen the world, to make it more mysterious. This will create a new excitement, which is the excitement of um, what I would call brutal transparency, a new aesthetic. Uh, this is what I call the genius of heaven and hell. But in a sense, we could just say that this is hyper-aesthetics, this is the ultimate conclusion of, of aesthetics. This is the essence of aesthetics. And the essence of aesthetics is demarcation.